And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? Good riddance, Diane Feinstein. Finally gone. So many people are just boo hooing that we've lost this great pioneer for advancing the causes of women and equal rights and LGBTQ rights. And yes, she was pro reproductive rights, but on all these other things, I beg to differ. She was no progressive. She was no touchy feely liberal anything. I've lived in San Francisco since 1978, and of all the mayors I have been through here, Diane Frankenfeinstein was the meanest, most petty, and in a lot of ways, the yeah, the most fascist mayor we ever had. She was more like Margaret Thatcher than how she's portrayed in the you know, national media since she first got into the Senate. First heard about her when Klaus Floride mentioned her uh, early on when Dead Kennedy was starting as this really mean woman on the Board of Supervisors who had told all these tenants in a, some apartment building she owned kind of downtown that if they all voted for Proposition 13 that gutted the tax base, gutted the schools, the infamous Proposition 13, she'd give them some kind of a break on their rent. And of course, instead, right afterwards, she raised it. Later on, in what might have been the same building, the Carlton Hotel, a lot of elderly and fixed income tenants, she shut all the heat off, trying to get them to all to leave so she could convert the apartments one by one into condos. And she was mayor by then. So having heard just this about Feinstein, imagine my horror a few months later when that ex-cop Dan White slipped in the one window he knew would be unlocked to avoid the medical detector, and he walked on down the hall, blew away Mayor George Moscone, who was a general genuine reformer after the reign of terror of Joseph Alioto, and down the hall he went and blew away Harvey Milk as well. And to my horror, who becomes acting mayor but Diane Frankenfeinswein? Then it was time to vote on a full mayor, an appointed mayor, not just an acting mayor. And she apparently promised her leading rival on the board, Quentin Kopp, and he helped vote to make her acting mayor. She wouldn't run for a real term, clearing the way for him. She had run for mayor twice before and lost. Didn't even make the runoff. And so, soon as she's voted and as the mayor until the election, she starts running for a real term. Quentin Kopp never, never forgave her, and that meant a blood feud began, culminating in the election in 1979, where I also ran. Within two weeks of Feinstein becoming mayor, police violence just skyrocketed. Brutality skyrocketed against Latino people, some labeled, labeled cholos, of course against LGBTQ people and undergrounds all over town. Harassment, violence, you name it. And yes, the cops loved going crazy on punk rockers, too. Going after Mabuhe Gardens, where we often played. Rented halls didn't last very long till the police would shut them down, in part, perhaps, because it wasn't something controlled by Bill Graham, who had a very palsy-walsy relationship with Diane Feinstein. But... It gets worse. 1981, San Francisco wins the Super Bowl. People are celebrating all over town. They'd never won anything like that before. There's people celebrating in the street, brought in Columbus, down Market Street, Market Castro. What do Feinstein's cops do but wait for a signal, and then they just went in and beat the crap out of people? They probably asked them to leave, and then, oh, you're not going to leave? Okay, fine. And, and they just attacked and then Feinstein called a press conference praising the cops for being so level-headed under fire and sending a signal that that's exactly the kind of police violence she liked. And But then found out a day or two later that one of her main financial backer kingpins was one of the people beat up in the cop violence. I mean, he was shoved into a doorway, skull cracked. He was 81 years old. So then she calls for an investigation of the police. Then the investigation of the police comes comes out just condemning her, condemning this thug police chief she appointed to get rid of the reform one Charles Gain that Moscone appointed, Cornelius Con Murphy, condemning him, condemning Feinstein's violent Gestapo cops. But to keep the report off the front page, she called a press conference that very day and announced she was banning handguns. Well, nice idea, but 
Of course, that did not survive a court challenge, but nevertheless, she was riding that to more and more national publicity, which is what she really, really, really wanted. To the point where some guns that were turned in under amnesty, she had them melted down, made into a big cross, and gave it to the Pope at the Vatican, also with cameras in tow, to make her even more famous among America's mayors. Just in time to land the Democratic Convention in 1984 to nominate Walter Mondale to run against Reagan, and she makes this, yes, someday I would like to be the first woman president. Hint, hint, Fritz Mondale. I want to be your vice president, and so do a lot of my rich friends. Instead, to avoid her, he picks Geraldine Ferraro as Feinstein's cops are running crazy all over town again. Union Square, other places. The picture of Michelle shocked on her debut album where the cops have either the club or the arm around her neck and she's screaming and everything. That's San Francisco's finest doing what they like to do best. Feinstein would not hear of trying to rein them in. She loved this stuff. She even had a police radio in her limo where she could relax by listening to police radio instead of music or news as she was traveling in her limo. One of the Board of Supervisors, Richard Hongisto, who was a sheriff earlier and a police chief later, even labeled her a cop groupie. And a cop groupie she was. Well, Dan White, of course, got off with three to five for manslaughter. The community goes crazy. People are storming City Hall with Feinstein trapped inside. <laughs> and the police cars burning in front of City Hall are on the cover of Fresh Fruit for Rotting Vegetables, Dead Kennedy's debut album. The cops finally just gave up on City Hall, broke up, marched up Market Street into Market and Castro, and just started beating up gay people. Broke through the windows at a bar called the Elephant Walk, which was later Harvey's and now it's something else, at 18th and Castro, right through the windows and just cornered everybody there and beat the crap out of them. Why? We're Feinstein's cops. The Barbary Coast never died. And this is what we love to do because we know we can. Oliver DeChico, the engineer on Fresh Fruit, and some other stuff told me later that once he was down on 24th Street late at night in Noe Valley and he saw a cop car stop, drag a guy out of probably a bar, maybe a restaurant, into the middle of the street, pound the crap of him, and then leave him there and drive away because they knew they could get away with it. That was Feinstein's police. Now she's seen as a great crusader for LGBTQ rights. Well, San Francisco was very pioneering, progressive, appointing a very pioneering and progressive, passing the first domestic partnership law, legalizing and recognizing same-sex couples as real couples. Mayor Feinstein vetoed it. She also was so obsessed with police, military, and force, it greatly expanded something called Fleet Week, where all these Navy ships come into town, all these sailors go roaring around town, and fighter planes buzz over my house for days on end. Kind of like you're standing in the middle of Baghdad, and she voted for the Iraq War, too. And you know, th this stuff... Like when it first started, sure enough, there were all these drunk sailors who'd be roaming up and down Broadway in North Beach, where Mabuhe Gardens and the on Broadway above it was. Every once in a while, they'd come on in, drunk out of their minds, not understand what punk was all about, and just start slugging punk rockers. Thank you, Diane. Yes, they're out raiding Broadway right below when he played the show above Mabuhe Gardens on the second floor, which was the last day of the on Broadway video DVD that's the best known live dead Kennedy stuff you can get out there. And she didn't stop there. There's been, from time to time, there's been questions. Oh, well, why do the punks hate Mayor Feinstein so much? NPR, KQED did something like that in 2015. And then they interviewed me again about Feinstein after she died. And I just couldn't hold back. It wasn't just the violence. She was virulently against any kind of rent control. After all, she was a slumlord. I ran against her in 1979. 
and caught, caught him on a dare and it turned out to be lots of cool really cool prank one of my favorites one favorite ones i ever did some of those things i had in there were aimed directly at her and i think they were very practical like making police run for elective office every four years voted on by the districts they patrol they'd have to live in the hood too in order to get elected people like george floyd and oscar grant and so many others might very well still be alive if that was the law and then feinstein of course you know totally into her law and order shtick and everything i'm gonna clean up san francisco we're gonna get this pretty straight i don't want san francisco to become kook city which is her way of doing this to elge LGBTQ people to minorities and of course artists and punk rockers let's not forget the hippies are still there some of them too she hated everybody she wanted just you know some sterile little city and stuff where people could make money she said she was going to clean up market street and she meant the tenderloin which is still a ghetto today and was long before feinstein was mayor i thought wait a minute what's at the other end of market street that's what needs cleaning up diane that's where bank of america headquarters was that's where chevron headquarters was at the time bechtel construction and so many more that's what needs cleaning up which is where i got the idea to require businessmen to wear clown suits between the hours of nine and five it was aimed at them that's the one of my mayor platform that the corporate mcnews liked the most and a lot of people that's the only one they know but uh hey why not i don't want san francisco to become kook city dennis perone running for supervisors long time cannabis legalization and lgbtq activists said we are the kooks and that's why we're running she wanted to wipe us out as publicly and viscerally as possible and that's just the way the place was run. She was such a petty little fascist that she had a columnist for the San Francisco Examiner, Warren Hinkle, arrested for walking around with his basset hound without a leash. He got dragged away by the police, put in a car, taken down to the jail, everything, just as a gesture to show who's boss from Diane Franken. Fine swine. During that mayor campaign, I successfully avoided her except for one all candidates meeting at a radio station. And finally, she walks in and just dressed in b tight black suit like a gun mall and just couldn't contain what a dragon lady she was. Even going up to people she knew, like Quentin Cop, saying, Oh, hello, it's so nice to see you. Just couldn't contain the venom and made no attempt to. That was the point. Maybe she didn't know any better. Another person running in that race was a guy named Joe Hughes, who either grew up with or knew a lot about Feinstein's childhood and teenagerhood. Yes, she was born into privilege, a surgeon and a former model, and that even when she was a teenager, according to Hughes, instead of going out on dates or this, that, and the other, they would cart her, at least have the help do it, to board of supervisors meetings so young Diane would take notes about what she was going to do later. Maybe that's why she thought so she was so entitled to become the first woman president. Hint, hint to Mondale. Oh, and as far as LGBTQ crusades, well, sorry. San Francisco did pass a groundbreaking domestic partnership law in 1983 that said, yeah, same-sex couples are legal domestic partners and have the same rights as married couples. Mayor Feinstein vetoed it. She also publicly condemned Gavin Newsom for all the wrong reasons. When he was mayor in 2004, John Kerry loses that election to Bush. She blamed him for publicly endorsing same-sex marriage. That was what cost him the election. That's just venomous claws of Feinstein. The same Feinstein who once she got to the Senate, she still never met police state stuff she didn't like. She quickly established herself as a leading advocate for one of the most genocidal dictators of the second half of the 20th century, Suharto from Indonesia. Of course, she was rah-rah, Patriot Act, totally backed the NSA when they were talk, caught spying on all these people, you know, thank you, Chelsea Manning, thank you at the time, WikiLeaks and all that, totally staunchly defending them until she found out they were spying on her and tapping her phone. Then she kind of changed her tune, at least for a while. 
but always renewed the Patriot Act, loved the Iraq War, never met a war on drugs thing she didn't like, or more police, stuff like that. And she even voted to confirm most of Trump's cabinet nominees, such as Ryan Zinke, that horrible interior secretary, Elaine Chao, several of the other really, really bad ones. Mike Pompeo, she voted for him. <laughs> then comes her second national coming out as a completely windbag on the Senate Judiciary Committee, where she was the ranking member when Brett Kavanaugh's nomination came up, and there's Christine Blasey Ford has, sends her a note saying, look, that guy raped me. She just left it at her desk for six, seven weeks, didn't think it was important. Finally, it came out, and she treated her and the others just like Joe Biden treated Anita Hill and wouldn't let the other people backing her testify in order to get Clarence Thomas in and stuff like that. She basically protected Brett Kavanaugh, even though she voted against him when it was safe to do so. Voted for, you know... And then, after the Amy Coney Barrett whitewash ramming her through right before the election, she hugs Lindsey Graham, noted segregationist, white supremacist, and everything else, Senator and Trump suckler from South Carolina, and hugs him. Oh, that's one of the best hearings I've ever been a part of. Gushy, gushy, goo, goo, gaga. Where was her brain? By then, even the San Francisco Chronicle who helped build her, and she never did anything wrong in that paper. Well, the leading editorial one Sunday was for her to please step down and resign because she wasn't capable of doing her job anymore. Her own staff was complaining that she didn't always know what was going on, didn't remember who she was talking to, what they were talking about, things like that. It gets even more glaring when she finally came back from the shingles episode and she looked like that grandmother that an Italian guy at a black metal bed dug up out of her grave and propped her up against the gravestone and that was the cover of the debut album of Mortuary Drape. And that's what Feinstein kind of came across like. The Italian guys, as Wesley would put it, were arrested and taken to jail. Diane, of course, was still so addicted to and obsessed with power, she didn't retire and ran for yet another term when she was 85 years old already and the spineless, corrupt, cigar-chomping California Democratic Party bigwigs said, great, run for another term, no problem. That's bad on them, folks, because, of course, it became a bigger and bigger mockery until finally the Wicked Witch of the Bay Area expired. Again, some good things like the assault weapons and she did do some other good things over time, but she also did a lot of bad stuff. And if she had been in, in, from any other city or any other state, she would have been a Republican.